Okay, thank you very much. I hope you can hear me and the sound is all right. Do you want to just uh, just wave and just confirm that you can hear me? Okay. Prof, I can hear you. It's Gul here. I can hear you very well. Yes, I know you can, but I don't think they can hear me in, uh, in Pakistan. Can you hear me, Tej? Apologies, Prof. I think there seems to be a problem with the volume of the sound. If I just fix it. Okay, I'll just wait for a minute because I know there's a little time to hear me. Okay. I'll do a quick test from time to time. I think that's actually good. Is that better now? Okay. I hope the rest of you can all hear me. Okay, so so I've been very interested in uh, steroid replacement, and um, for a long time uh, we have been using, as I'm sure you have, hydrocortisone three times a day, and it's a pretty effective, safe replacement. Um, but just remember that uh, there are other hormones where we don't use the endogenous hormone to treat people. And if you remember some very basic medical school endocrinology, You'll remember that the zona glomerulosa, the outside little thin bit here, makes aldosterone. And we replace patients not with aldosterone, but with fluidocortisone. 
and uh, the zona fasciculata makes cortisol, okay? And that is controlled by ACTH. So these two things are controlled by two completely different routes, as you all know. But that means that we can think about replacement in a different way. And that is the start of my thoughts, okay? In a patient who has, I think there's a certain noise in the background there now. In a patient who has got adrenal failure, um, they have two problems. They have lack of aldosterone and lack of cortisol. And the fact that you are missing those two hormones means you need to replace these two hormones. Now, aldosterone has a half-life of only 20 minutes, so we don't give that. And cortisol also has a short half-life of 66 minutes. Now, because aldosterone has such a short half-life, we don't give replacement because its half-life is too short for safe once daily administration. And so we've modified the molecule by sticking in a fluorine atom in here. Now fluorine in uh, biological systems does not exist, okay? And therefore, if you do artificially put in a fluorine atom, its presence slows down the metabolism a lot. Now this molecule binds to both the minocorticoid and the glucocorticoid receptors. And the nice thing about fludrocortisone is it has a very long half, like three and a half hours, and the effect lasts for 18 hours. It's ideal for once daily administration. And no one has a problem with that. We don't say we should use a natural hormone because fludrocortisone works very well. And we give 50 to 100 micrograms daily. Now, of course, cortisol also has a diurnal rhythm, okay? And this is the graph, and you can see here, on the y-axis is the level of cortisol, okay? Uh, initially in micrograms, but in red in nanomoles. And basically, all of us, if we have a normal diurnal rhythm, have a low cortisol at midnight and a high cortisol in the morning, okay? And it goes up and down daily. And the important thing is, the rise in cortisol starts at dawn before you wake up, and it peaks at around 8.30 in this study, where the volunteers were awake from 8 a.m. and went to sleep at 10 p.m. They tried to do it artificially. So this is the darn rhythm of cortisol, which is quite difficult to mimic, because if you give hydrocortisone, okay, and you give them a dose here, you have a huge peak, and then it rapidly falls off, so that by lunchtime, it's all gone. And then they give a second dose here, okay, because its half-life is so short. And if you give a second dose, and then a third dose, then it's okay. But it's not really okay, okay, because there's a peak there and a peak there, and those peaks are not normal, okay? And at those times of day, you are particularly cortisol sensitive. And so, especially this late peak here, seems to cause a much bigger rise in things like cholesterol and bone turnover. And that's because the receptor for glucocorticoids changes its sensitivity depending on the time of day, okay? And so the sensitivity goes to populations. I said that noise there, hello? Okay, and so um, the sensitivity changes and in, at night you're very sensitive. So a little bit of hydrocortisone is very potent and very unhealthy if you take it in the evening. Now what we do with hydrocortisone is therefore take it three times a day. What we want is this nice curve here, but what we get is it falls too quickly, then we take a second dose and a third dose. And again, you see these two peaks, especially this one, uh, is thought to be a bit harmful because it causes things like resistance to cortisol. Okay, because when, when given by mouth, its half-life is too short. So what we need is a longer lasting version of cortisol in the same way that a longer lasting version of aldosterone. And of course, the art of this is prednisolone, okay? And what the difference between hydrocortisone and prednisolone is this double bond here. It's the only difference. And when you add a double bond, it slows the metabolism of prednisolone, okay? This is prednisolone in case you, there's things in the way, isn't it? Let me just move it out of the way. Let me, yeah, okay. Um, 
Sorry, guys. Okay, so so there is the double bond on prednisolone. Okay, and what that does is it gives you a longer half life and makes it a little more potent than cortisol. It has a higher binding affinity. Now, its potency means that you need to give about three or four milligrams once daily. If you give five, it's too much. You start to have side effects. Okay. So we did some studies measuring prednisolone in healthy volunteers, measuring the level, and found that, in fact, three milligrams is a very full replacement dose for hydrocortisone. That's all you need, three milligrams once daily. Okay, if you do that, it peaks very nicely in the morning. It's rapidly absorbed, and then it circulates just like uh, the cortisol that you have. But you don't need to keep secreting it because it's got a longer half-life. We take it first thing in the morning and it's rapidly absorbed and it's ideal. Uh, let's put it down a bit here, sorry. Ideal uh, for once daily administration, okay? So we then started doing studies with lots of different steroids, okay? And this is one of them. And in this paper, we basically said that pregnenolone replacement mimics the circadian rhythm better than any other steroid. And we published this in 2016. Um, and noticed that the average dose was only 3.8 milligrams once daily. We did lots of adjustments until we got it normal. And we published this about five years ago now. And since then, we have been using prednisolone once daily as our main replacement, okay? Rather than prednisolone. But people were worried because, of course, prednisolone um, is known to have many side effects. And that's because prednisolone is normally used for other diseases in a suppressive manner. So they tend to give doses higher than five milligrams. But when you give less than five milligrams, like this is three or four milligrams, then we find that it has the same vascular profile as hydrocortisone if you use it in replacement doses of three to four. And I think that if we get the dose even lower, that we'll have it will be better than hydrocortisone. This was a very short study, and we looked at 80 patients who we had on hydrocortisone and compared them with patients on once they prednisolone. Notice they're only on 3.7 milligrams on average, okay? So between three and four milligrams. And when you do that, if you ask the patients how satisfied they are, you find that they're more satisfied with prednisolone than with hydrocortisone. Now that's because they're on it only once daily. Okay? But notice that five milligrams once daily is excessive. So if you're in a country that hasn't got any smaller doses well, of five milligrams, then that I'll can be... Hello. I think there's some disturbance on the line here. Okay, let me go back to this. Okay, 3.7 milligrams once daily. Okay, so, so, so in 2018, a paper was published that said now it's common knowledge that regularly used twice or twice daily hydrocortisone is non-physiological, okay? And that is that is clearly a, a, a problem thing. We don't like it. And so that's why we found that prednisolone once daily is the right treatment because it is physiological to have one peak daily, okay? Now, I'm not the only person saying this. This is a large study from uh, Brazil where they gave children with congenital adrenal hyperplasia, either three times daily hydrocortisone or once daily prednisolone, okay? And they followed them for a year. And they looked at growth and they looked at bone turnover and bone formation. And they basically found that a single morning dose of prednisolone appeared to achieve better clinical and hormonal control than three times daily hydrocortisone. So there are, this is in 2004 they published this and it was hidden there, but it's very, very good data. 
okay? And what they found was that prednisolone, as I was saying, it's much more potent than we thought. And they said that three milligrams, because prednisolone is about seven times more potent than hydrocortisone, not what the textbooks say, okay? So three milligrams is the right replacement dose. So this is in the textbooks, and the problem is they're wrong. They say that 20 hydrocortisone is five of prednisolone, but no, it's not. It's three milligrams, and that's because it's seven times more potent, okay? So this is very important. Prednisolone is much more potent, and if you use five milligrams, then you're going to not see any real benefit. If you want to see a benefit, you need to cut the dose to a smaller amount. Now, it depends what you have available in your country. Um, we are lucky in the UK to have one milligram tablet. So I can prescribe one or two or three or four milligram tablets, uh, four milligrams, and um, I can get the dose quite right. But if you have only got five milligram tablets, then what I've started doing is breaking the tablets and giving either half, that 2.5 milligrams, which works very well for some people, and three quarters at 3.75 milligrams. And it's cheaper, it's better. That's the thing that people surprise. It's cheaper, but better and more effective than um, three times daily. So now I want to really check which one is better. Is it better to take three milligram prednisolone once daily, or is it better to take hydrocortisone three times a day? Now, of course, many patients find that very inconvenient. And therefore, it's really important that we do a comparison. And so we've set up a national study in the UK, and it's becoming an international study because there's some centers in India, and I think we're going to have the centers in Pakistan. And I think Ted has been very helpful at starting this off, but I think we need to actually know by randomizing patients and checking and seeing which one is better. And it's a very easy study to do because what we're looking at is very simple things like weight, BMI, HbA1c, whichever the worst one. If you take prednisolone 5, we know that it's bad. It causes hypertension, hyperglycemia, insulin resistance. But when you use 4 or 3, then it seems not to be doing that. So we need to get the right dose for each patient. Okay? And uh, 3 milligrams is now my starting dose. Some patients are on four, but I very rarely, in fact, never start with five. When you look at the data, it's very clear, in fact, that patients all over the world, including the UK, US, everywhere, that patients who have adrenal insufficiency have an increased rate of cardiovascular death early because of the effect of over-replacement, okay? due to the excess steroid exposure. So it's very clear that when we give hydrocortisone three times daily, we end up giving too much, especially the third dose. When we give prednisolone five milligrams, we do the same thing, the same bad thing. Prednisolone five milligrams is too much. Hydrocortisone 10, five, five, the second dose, the third dose is too much. It's very hard to get the dose of hydrocortisone right because um, the third dose is very hard to uh, administer correctly. So we started this large study asking what is the right replacement dose for prednisolone? And we have a lot of patients here now on prednisolone and we're measuring a lot of markers. And I'd like you all in your centers to do the same thing and help us with this international study you can do your own version of this. It's be very easy to publish some data if you want to. It's a bit of work, but if you have patients who are on prednisolone 5 or they're on hydrocortisone 1055 or they're on any replacement, you can log it and then change them to a more appropriate dose and see if there's an improvement. Now, we have set up to prove this an assay for prednisolone. And what we, we're doing is we're measuring levels of prednisolone to try and monitor them. And you can see that uh, there's quite a wide variability in prednisolone metabolism. So for example, um, this patient here, he's on the correct dose, his levels on four milligrams once daily because he's got a nice rapid reduction and he has a normal level and at midnight it falls to zero, which is what should happen, okay? 
And the same for this yellow patient here, he's got a level, he's only taking two milligrams once daily and he's perfectly well and he feels well, which is what's important. Um, this patient in red also feels well on four milligrams, but we find that he's a very slow metabolizer. And so if we leave him on four, he'll be on too much. So what we can do and what you can do is set up a study. Uh, you will need to get your own hospital ethics to approve it, but it's very easy and you can do your own study and publish it yourselves. But we can put your data into our study and put a bigger publication as well. And what we're doing is we're looking at different doses of hydrocortisone and prednisolone and measuring several things and comparing them to what I think is the best treatment which is three quarters of a tablet of prednisone five milligrams or three milligrams. And all you need to do is, before you change anything, you need to monitor the patient, check their weight, check their HbA1c, check their lipids, things that you normally do to prevent vascular death in your diabetes patients, for example. When you've measured those things, you say, when they've been on my previous drug, the hydrocortisone, this is the outcome. Their weight is 65 kilograms. The A1C is 6%. They're not diabetics necessarily, but you measure it to see if there's a change. And then you reduce their dose of prednisolone to three quarters, or you switch from hydrocortisone to prednisolone. And then you leave them on the new lower dose prednisolone for four months. And then it's one stage, very easy. And then you measure the same things again and see if they've got better. And if they have in enough patients, if you can recruit five patients on hydrocortisone who are on replacement, you'll be able to get enough data to say something sensible. In order to try and put these together, you can email me on that address, steroids at imperial.ac.uk. Um, and if you do, I can help you register um, the patients in some sort of study. And you can, I can send you the ethics forms that we have got approved to see if your ethics committees will approve them. So my suggestion, and it's just before uh, the end of the hour there, so I won't overrun. And my suggestion is that we're talking about comparing three quarters of a five milligram tablet, which is very easy to get, widely available in every country in the world. Compare it with whatever you are using, which might be hydrocortisone, or it might be five milligrams per nisolone, or it might be something else. Before you change anything, you measure HbA1c, you measure their weight, their waist-hip ratio, and if you can do other blood tests, then that can be helpful. And it, we can have a discussion by email about which ones are the most useful. And then you change them to 3.75 milligrams, that's three quarter of a tablet of prednisolone, if that's what you have in Pakistan. Or if you've got ones, then you can use three. And then after four months, you measure the same things. And if they're better, then we know the answer. So I'm gonna stop there because it's uh, exactly on time. And I would like to know whether you, A, you heard me, that's really important, and B, whether anyone's got any questions that you can put in on the chat. <laughs>